Welcome to a new series for our show, The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, a syndicated program from the latter half of the 80s and geared more towards an anime approach of storytelling rather than the typical storytelling of animation of that period. This is the first episode, and it is atypical of the series because it's an origin story, essentially. And in a sense, it's the first half of two stories. So um, I'm going to discuss it in isolation here, but we're going to examine it more thoroughly when we get to the second episode next time. So let's strap in and get into this episode, Phoenix. As the opening explains, it's the year 2086. And two peaceful aliens approach the Earth to share with us the secret of the hyperdrive. How it works, I mean, not that hyperdrive has a foot fetish or hidden money in the Cayman Islands or something. Waldo and Zozo are the aliens. and Right now, Galaxy Ranger Zachary Fox is bringing his family to a farming planet of the Kiwi. It's hoped that with the knowledge of both humans and Kiwi working together, this planet will be so efficient and effective that it could feed the entire League of Planets. But there's also the bad guys, of course, the Crown, and they're on their way here. The new species called Human. Their life force will be mine. Oh, there is nothing in that sentence that I like. The Kiwis are wondering who's coming, though. There's no sense in raiding when there's nothing that has been harvested yet. So no one is really surprised when they learn that it is the crown. They are, however, scared shitless and activate the experimental shield, even though it isn't finished yet. It has a bit of a glaring weakness. Yeah, if the shield can't protect itself, that's kind of a problem. Especially when they're up against skilled crown fighter pilots. I'm in too close. Ah! And who apparently have been joined by the chief's nephew that really needed a job. The crown landing craft soon shows up and heads out and mounts and shoots everybody with stun blasts. That way they can take the humans prisoner and make off with them. Well, Zachary Fox is still on his way, and soon their ship is being messed with, and the Phoenix has to drop out of hyperspace. A look around says that they've overshot the planet by 100 light years, and apparently by design, because there's a pirate ship that's waiting for them, run by Captain Kidd. Frequencies from human space, Captain! Ha <laughs> ha Humans from the solar system! Gunner, contact the Queen of the Crown. The kid has obtained some human specimens. I like that he's like a bird and has a monkey on his shoulder, like a reverse of Long John Silver. To deal with these outlaws, the kid, um, Zachary's kid, I mean, suggests using the laser communicator as a weapon if he can get souped up enough. Meanwhile, Zachary warns the pirates that if they attack, it'll be an act of war which is about as effective as saying, Stop! If you rob me, that's a violation of the law! The outlaws start scanning their ship's computer to figure out what the state of the Phoenix is, but Waldo figures out what they're trying, and they're able to foil those efforts. Unfortunately, there are other efforts, too. GV, what was that? The sensation that you're about to have a bad day. Zachary Fox, incidentally, is voiced by none other than Jerry Orbach, perhaps best known for his long-running role as Detective Lenny Briscoe on Law & Order. Well, who better to send against space pirates, I guess? He heads out to cut the lines, not realizing that Space Tarzan is on their side. Zach, get out of there! <clears throat> That's not a threat you're used to facing when you're standing in the vacuum of space. And the kick is good! Don't worry, I'm sure he will be retrieved. If there's one group that is known for their loyalty, it's pirates. Zachary gets ambushed and wakes up inside the Iron Falcon in the galaxy's most fabulous force field. Captain Kidd comes down to gloat, and when Zachary tries to get themselves and their ship ransomed back to Earth, Kidd thinks that the crown will pay a lot more than the humans would. He's probably right. Budget cuts. Waldo and Zozo, by the way, I read somewhere that Zozo actually has a different name, but in this episode he is called nothing but Zozo, so I'm sticking with it. They go to rescue Zachary. The three members of the Fox family left are going to try to escape, 
but the mom gets attacked by a pirate while going back for more life canisters. Oh, right in the first mate. The pirate looks ready to bite her head off, but it gets distracted by... Yeah, I don't even know what to tell you. She uses the advantage that the distraction creates to blast the pirate, but passes out from her injuries. Presuming his crew aren't a bunch of nincompoops easily defeated by a critter playing a saxophone, Captain Kidd calls up the Queen to say he has four humans for sale. So it's embarrassing to hear not only did two of them escape, but... Send someone in there to get it! We did! Meat Face! Meat Face? There's no way that was a good nickname. That's like being nicknamed Hamburger Booty. The Queen is not pleased and says she intends to take the ship as well, since it's Andorian in design. I want my booty! Hamburger Booty! Meanwhile, the infiltration is somehow managing to get past the crack security. I have never so wanted, and so not wanted, to know exactly what he's doing. They ask the pirate to stop practicing cunnilingus on his fists so that he can tell them how to turn this force field off. He does, but then realizes he has just failed at his job. And then... Good news for Zachary, bad news for Captain Kidd. Sir, the humans have escaped their cell! And they all laughed when he bought that hat. During the escape, Zachary is shot, suffering serious damage to the left side of his body. They eventually get out in the pirate's own shuttle, but despite that, the fact the Queen plans to take the human ship convinces Captain Kidd to turn his weapons against her, allowing our heroes to make a break for it. It's not a good guy turn, though. Captain Kidd still has Zachary's wife, Eliza, and he's not giving her back. Given the threat they face, the Galaxy Rangers are getting a special team now. Zachary and three others. Goose, Nico, and Doc Hartford. They'll get an implant put into their brain that links to their badges, so they can tap it to activate their special abilities for a time. Zachary, for instance, had to have major bionic work installed to replace the damage the pirates did. And he can use his implant to then supercharge and send a blast out of his arm. Doc Hartford has supercomputer programming skills. Nico has psychic abilities. And Goose gets Wolverine-like healing. All these will be important, as we're going to see next week in our next episode of Galaxy Rangers.